Hi, my name is Reverend Ken Kimiwe, the Deputy Bishop of Christ is the Answer Ministries, and I also serve as the Senior Pastor at Sitam Buruburu. And I'm glad to have you with me as we will be reflecting over this subject of the roles and responsibilities in marriage. I know this is a subject that is very thorny and that's sometimes very touchy for most of us who are married and at times we are not quite sure who should be doing what at what time in our marriages and thus many of the conflicts that we have in our families because we either duplicate our roles or sometimes we are not even familiar with those roles or sometimes we are just ignorant about what we ought to do as a couple in marriage. And so I'll be opening up a little bit of discussion and will be sharing with us what are our roles and responsibilities in marriage. Today I would like to begin by addressing the open subject of roles and responsibilities. And we see that roles and responsibilities are key in family because as a husband or as a wife or as a child in a particular marriage or a particular family, there are certain things that are expected of you. Let's begin first of all by looking at what is the status of a couple in marriage? How do you look at husband and wife, the man and his wife in marriage? I want to begin by saying that the first thing is that both of them are equal in being because they were made in the image of God. All of us, we are made in the image of God. God made us male and female, but we are all made in the image of God. The women do not have a different image and the men do not have a different image of God. All of us share in the same image of God. It's only that when it comes to our roles and our responsibilities, we see that we are different in those aspects. But in terms of our makeup, in terms of our original uh, creation, God made them male and female, and he made them in his own image. And then secondly, the other thing that we are going to see there still is that we are all sinners, whether male or female. There is no sin for male and sin for the women. And we are going to see that as we talk about our roles and our responsibilities, we are all fallen images. And we come to the place where sometimes we struggle with certain things because both of us are experiencing the same kind of challenges of sin or other things that come to us, whether we are male or female. And then the other thing that we also see is that we all need the same salvation. There is no salvation for the women and there is no salvation for the men. All of us are candidates or are exposed to the same kind of a gospel. And as we talk about the family, we are going to see that there is the same kind of redemption that is available for you as a man in the home or for you as a woman in that home. And so when we look at these aspects, we are saying the first thing in the whole aspect of roles and responsibility is when it comes to the image of God, we are equal. When it comes to the issues of sin, we are equal. When it comes to the matters that have to do even with our redemption, we are all equal. The other thing that we also want to bring in secondly about our roles and responsibilities in the home is that we are made physiologically different. Men have been made with this masculine kind of uh, uh, muscle type of body. And I believe there is a role that God would like you to play. And that's why he gave you that masculine body, that uh, body that talks about the male image and the male kind of uh, you know, physiological makeup. There are certain things that we are going to see that God would require of you as a man because of your physical makeup you are going to play certain roles. And on the other hand, the woman also, she was made physiologically the way she is because there are certain specific roles that she is going to play in the home that are very cut out for her as a woman. And even if a man tried to play that role, probably there would be conflict or they would be defeated. 
And so we are going to see that God in bringing man and woman together, there were very clear cut roles and responsibilities that he would have expected them to play in the marriage. And we will be looking at that as we go along the way. And then thirdly and lastly, the other thing that we want to also bring out very clearly as we talk about roles and responsibility in the marriage is that both man and the woman are supposed to play complementary roles. In other words, what the woman cannot be able to do, the man is able to do. What the uh, man is not able to do, the woman is able to do. So they complement one another. There are certain things that the man can be able to do. There are certain things that the woman cannot be able to do, but also in their working and in their uh, applying themselves to the responsibilities that they have in the home, to the roles that they have in the home, they complement one another. They complete one another. And that is why in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, when we see God bringing Eve to Adam, what does he say? That I'll make for him a helpmate that will be fitting for him. That is a complementary role. We see that Eve comes into the life of Adam to complete him in a certain aspect that he was not complete in. And the same thing, the woman cannot be complete without the man coming in and bringing in that aspect which only a man can be able to bring in her life. And so when we talk about this whole subject of roles and responsibility, we want to lay down this foundation. Number one, as we have said, that there are those things that are equal for all of us. In other words, we are all made in the image of God. We are also uh, sinners and who need to be redeemed. And number three, that we are those who are exposed to the same kind of salvation under the equal or the working of male and female in the image of God. And then secondly, we have also seen that there is need for a man and a woman to distinctively understand their roles because of their physiological makeup. Like we are going to see in a short while, the woman is the only one who can get pregnant. You know, she can only be the one to carry the pregnancy. The man can never do that. And so there are certain things that are very distinct about the woman. And there are also certain things that are very distinct about the man. And we are going to see that in us being able to understand those distinctions, we thirdly can then complement one another as husband and wife. I pray that you will continue with us in this series as we continue to explore more on what are the roles of the man and the woman in the marriage. I would like to welcome you. If you have any suggestions, if you have any questions that you'd like to interact with us concerning this subject of the roles and responsibilities in marriage, feel free to get onto any of those uh, different social media platforms that are listed there on the screen, and we would be more than glad to touch base with you.